Oh my gosh. Let you do it. It is a gorgeous December day in December. It actually feels like December in December here in the shithole <coughs> paradise of Garfield, Texas here on this glorious sunny Wednesday morning. Sunny but frosty. I see frost on the pumpkin here in the shithole former paradise of Garfield, Texas here on Wednesday, December 18th. 2019. One week from uh, Christmas. One more week till uh, Christmas. And speaking of Christmas, I want to uh, send out, before we get into our We Are So Fucked, the Doomer headline for Christmas season 2019, I want to send out once again a huge thank you to one of my angels here on uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe. And this is my very kind-hearted tribes member, Brother JJ. This is our, there's two Brother JJs here in the tribe. Uh, this is our West Bumblefuck, Brother JJ, for his very kind Christmas card to me, uh to support my work on YouTube. And anyone who has ever sent Sancho Panza and I a Christmas bonus or any other support for what we do on YouTube, I really do appreciate it. And while I'm sending out letters of appreciation for PayPal donations, I would very much like to send out a big thank you to those spoiled little rich brats up in the Hambone Hilton for uh, finally, on December 18th, sending me their $300 rent check for the Hambone Hilton. Uh, one of my sleuthing tribes members has found that this young couple in my house, either one of their cars probably cost twice as much as the Hambone Hilton. Apparently, uh, <clears throat> they just spent $300,000, about nine times the price of the Hambone Hilton to buy a 115 acre, acres of land. Uh, you, you know, fucking rich people, they really make me want to fucking puke. And I will have to do a uh, depressed collapsitarian wine tomorrow on petty tyrants. We're going to, tomorrow during my wine, we're going to uh, dip into the works of Carlos Castaneda uh, to talk about petty tyrants such as fucking rich people. But that will be tomorrow, but today we're simply <coughs> for our, uh, we're going to talk about two, two stories here on our We Are So Fucked Doomer headlines of the day right here from uh, good old Yahoo News. Now, uh, of course, speaking of, of petty tyrants, we all know the biggest story on the planet today, the second biggest story on the planet today, the third biggest story on the planet today, and the fourth biggest story on the planet today. But coming in at number five is the very story that three of my own Alert Tribes members have sent me. Right here from the New York Times, the editors have chosen this as the fifth biggest story of the day. Uh, and I just did, I can't remember. <coughs> God damn it! <coughs> See if this hot coffee can, uh, I think maybe it's mold spores. Anyway, uh, which channel was I just doing this story from the New York Times? 
a, a few days ago about all of the methane leaks going on uh, out, you know, right here in the shithole state of Texas. The New York Times doing an expose of, of how these methane leaks uh, from these fucking frackers in Texas are uh, much, much uh, worse than previously thought and certainly a hell of a lot bigger than being reported by the foxes guarding the <coughs> hen house. And then right here, uh, but the biggest, the biggest methane leak of them all uh, was not from the shithole state of Texas, apparently, but from the shithole state of Ohio. Uh, many versions of this story. This is the New York Times uh, getting credit as the fifth biggest story on the planet with the No Shit Sherlock uh, headline, a methane leak seen from space proves to be far larger than thought. Yes. The first satellite, the first satellite designed to continually monitor the planet for methane leaks made a startling discovery. A little known gas well accident at an Ohio fracking site was, in fact, one of the largest, and it might be the single largest, methane leak ever recorded, at least so far, in the United States. Um, the findings by a Dutch-American team of scientists mark a step forward in using space technology to detect leaks of methane, a potent greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming from oil and gas sites worldwide. Yes, the scientists said that the newest findings reinforced the eco-Nazi view that methane releases like these which are difficult to predict, could be far more widespread than previously thought. This is Ilse Aben, one of the authors of the new report. Uh, we are entering a new era with a single observation, one single overpass we are able to see plumes of methane coming from large emission sources. Yes, uh, scientists also said the new findings reinforced the view that methane emissions from oil, well, oil and gas installations, can you say fracking, are far more widespread than previously thought. Uh, the, this particular blowout uh, from f f in February of 2018 at a natural gas well run by Exxon Mobil in Belmont County, Ohio, released more methane than the entire oil and gas industries of many, many nations do in an entire year, the research team found. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm just skipping forward through this article. Natural gas production has come under increased scrutiny because of the prevalence of leaks of methane from the fuel supply chain. When burned for electricity, natural gas is cleaner than coal, producing about half the carbon dioxide that coal does when it is burned. But 
if methane escapes into the atmosphere before being burned, it can warm the planet more than 80 times as much as the same amount of carbon dioxide over a 20 year period. Uh, I'm not sure who this Hamburg person is. Uh, one of these methane researchers. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, quoting whoever this uh, methane researcher Hamburg is, quote, When I started working on methane, now about a decade ago, the standard line then was, we've got it under control. We are managing it. But, in fact, they did not have the data. They did not have it under control because they did not understand what was actually happening. And you cannot manage what you cannot measure. Close quote. Of course, uh, Exxon spokesman Casey Norton insists that his company's own scientists had scrutinized images and taking pressures, pressure readings from the well to, to arrive at a much smaller estimate than the satellite data, quoting the Planet Is spokesman for the Planet Eater, quote, This was an anomaly. This is not something that happens on any regular basis, and we do our very best to prevent this from ever happening. Well, this is something that happens on a regular basis. It happens every fucking second of every fucking day, and, and as these fucking frackers uh, head out uh, across the planet, uh, thanks uh, in part to Hillary Clinton, you know, when Hillary Clinton was Barack Obama's uh, Secretary of State, her number one job as Barack Obama, you know, Barack Obama invented fracking like Al Gore invented the internet, uh, Hillary's number one job was to take fracking around the planet. Uh, any, anyway, we're going to move on. Now that was what the Yahoo editors considered the fifth biggest story on the planet. Now we're going to look at the fourth biggest trending story. I, I'm not sure how the Yahoo News editorial board figures out how stories are trending. I think it might, I, I don't know how they figure this out, but this according to readers of today's readers of Yahoo News, this is their fourth pick uh, as the biggest story on the planet. The methane leak story did not make the top five by the readers poll, but coming in at number four, nowhere mentioned in the Yahoo News editors list of the top five was this little piece from Business Insider magazine. Uh, and, and I really do uh, have more and more respect for Business Insider magazine and their little we are so fucked tidbit of the day. A nuclear attack would most likely target one of these six U.S. cities, but experts say none of them are prepared. Okay. The chance that a nuclear bomb would strike a U.S. city is slim, but Nuclear experts say it is not out of the question. A nuclear, uh, a nuclear attack in a large metropolitan area is one of the 15 
disaster scenarios. Huh, I need to look into this. Is one of 15 disaster scenarios for which the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, otherwise known as FEMA, has an emergency strategy. <laughs> FEMA's plan involves deploying first responders, providing immediate shelter for evacuees, and decontaminating victims who have been exposed to ra radiation. <coughs> for everyday citizens, FEMA has some simple advice. Duck, cover, and pray. Actually, here is, here is FEMA's advice if your city gets hit with a nuclear bomb, get inside, stay inside, and stay tuned. Yes, uh, there you go. Uh, get inside to uh, anybody who wants to know the definition of get inside, I, I might want to uh, point FEMA to some pictures of Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, when the nuclear bombs back then were a tiny, you know, or a bad hair day compared to the nuclear bomb uh, we're talking about uh, going into 2020. So you can look at those photographs and decide exactly where would you get inside and exactly what would you be staying tuned for. Anyway, so that's FEMA's advice. But let's hear from public health expert at Columbia University who specializes in disaster pre preparedness, Irvin Redliner, who says FEMA's guidelines are not enough to prepare a city for a nuclear attack. Quote, there is not one single jurisdiction in America that has anything approaching an adequate plan to deal with a nuclear detun detonation. Close quote. Do you think so? Uh, <laughs> yes, do you think so, Irwin? Okay. <clears throat> that includes the six urban areas that Red Leaner thinks are the most likely targets of a nuclear attack which would be, of course, New York, Chicago, L.A., Houston, San Francisco, and with any luck at all, Washington, D.C. These cities are not only some of the largest and densest in the country, but are home to critical infrastructure like energy plants, mainly Houston, Texas, financial hubs, government facilities, and wireless transmission systems that are vital to U.S. security. Uh, each city technically has an emergency management website that informs citizens about what to do in a crisis but most of those sites, except for L.A. and New York, do not even mention a nuclear attack. That makes it difficult for residents to learn how to protect themselves if a bomb were to hit their city. Back to Red Leaner, quote, It would not be the end of life as we know it. Yes, being hit by a nuclear bomb would not be the end of life as we know it. Thank you. Uh, it would be, it would just be a horrific, catastrophic disaster with many, many unknown and cascading 
consequences. I don't know what Irwin's uh, definition of the end of life as we know it uh, would look like if being hit by a nuclear bomb uh, does not meet the criteria. Now, I'll have to get Irwin on the show for some amplification and uh, clarification. Uh, anyway, then they go in, uh, <clears throat> you know, the article. Uh, about what this will look like, where it's going to come from, uh, where do you run, where do you hide. Uh, let's see, and then all of these possible... Oh God, here I go, moving in, moving to New York. Looking, looking at a nuclear strike against New York City, which is about four hours from the Hambone uh, Hilton, Un under such circumstances, not even the entire state of New York would have enough hospital beds to serve the wounded. Yes. Uh... He also expressed concern about what might happen to emergency responders, you know, going into a nuclear strike zone to help uh, victims. Quote, are we actually going to order National Guard troops or U.S. soldiers to go into highly radioactive zones? Will we be getting bus drivers? to go in and pick up people to take them to safety? Yes, every strategic or tactical response is fraught with inadequacies, uh, close quote. Uh, and of course, then it talks about uh, how cities do not have... Uh, that there used to be some big push back in the 1960s, you know, to, to make bomb shelters, these giant bomb shelters uh, for, it says, 11 million people. They were talking about, of course, these were never built. Uh, well, uh, they weren't built for you and me. Uh, they were built, uh, you know who goddamn well who these bomb shelters were built for. Uh, but they ain't built for us. Anyway, let's uh, get down to the, and this is a long involved article. Let's get down to the final chapter of this article. <clears throat> This is part of our 21st century reality. Do you think so? Redliners said many city authorities worry that even offering nuclear explosion response plans might induce panic among residents. <clears throat> Quote, There's a fear among public officials that if they went out and publicly said, this is what you need to know in the event of a nuclear attack, then maybe people would fear that the mayor knew something that the public did not, he said. Hmm. But educating the public does not have to be scary. This is, I don't know, uh, somewhere some... Uh, uh, Apocalyptimist named Buttermeyer was introduced in this long story. So whoever Mr. or Ms. Buttermeyer is, quote, the good news, the good news in, in all of this is, is that get it, get inside, stay inside, stay tuned, still works. I kind of liken it to stop, drop, and roll you know, or, or duck and cover. If your clothes 
catch on fire, that's what you should do. That doesn't make you afraid of fire, hopefully, but it does allow you the opportunity to take action to save your life." Close quote. Both experts did agree that for a city to be prepared for a nuclear attack, it must first acknowledge that such an attack is possible, even if the threat is, now anyway, remote. Quoting Mr. Redlater, quote, This is part of our 21st reality. I have apologized to my children and grandchildren for leaving the world in such a horrible mess. But that is what it is now. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> sorry guys for leaving the world in such a horrible mess, but that is what it is now. It is what it is now. It is a horrible mess. Uh, two weeks before we hit the 2020s. My God, when I started uh, Humpty Dumpty Tribe 10 years ago, I had no fucking idea uh, that 10 years later that uh, looking back over 10 years of Humpty Dumpty Tribe videos going into 2020, it is much worse than I ever could have imagined 10 years ago. And it is much worse, much faster than previously thought. Uh, my buddy Jay down in Brazil today was talking about he is changing his sign from we are so fucked to we are completely fucked. Going in the difference between the 20 teens and the 2020s is uh, we are no longer W-A-S-F. We are W-A-C-F. We are completely, totally fucked. The only thing left is for the fat lady to sing, although I must say there are a hell of a lot more fat ladies in the year 2020 uh, than there were in 2010 <coughs> to sing, so it ought to be quite a fucking chorus uh, on the planet when all of the fat women begin singing, we are completely fucked. And with that, uh, I need to wrap up this uh, We Are So Fucked Doomer Headlines of the Day uh, because I have this fellow <clears throat> coming over to load up <coughs> some more of this firewood uh, from this uh, tree that group cut down last week to throw my, probably throw my uh, fucking herniated rib back out again. We're so fucked, people. Merry Christmas. Bye, guys. <laughs>